This video is going to show you how you can run a Cruskull Wallace test in R. I'll also show you how you can get the effect size for it and produce some appropriate post hoc tests. It's a really straightforward process to do this. We actually only need one package, which is the R statics package, and we use this one to produce our effect size. Other than that, everything here we can do in base R. So at the very beginning, you'll need to install the package your R statics package and you only have to do that once remember once you've installed it you just need to pull out your library when appropriate so I'm going to do that now and then we're going to read in some data this is the data and as you can see it's a CSV file so again we just use the read.csv command and I'm going to call it df and this is my data frame that I'm going to be using and here it is it just says idle and happiness so just to explain what idle means is essentially this is a ex experiment in which we looked at people who people's idle were on twitter and we selected three different idols whether they seem to idolize elon musk kylie jenner or dave Grohl. and these are our three levels to this variable so we can label it in the data set using our labeling command here so if you run that then view our data frame again you can see we've got ellen musk carly jenner and dave Grohl. and then we've got the uh, happiness score and this happiness score was taken on a one to four like scale one meaning not happy at all four meaning very happy so we're interested in seeing where there's differences in happiness between people who idolize these different celebrities so the first thing we can do briefly is just view our data so we just ask for a box plot instead of just asking for happiness we'll look at it separately for the different idol groups there we go so we can see happiness here is on our y-axis then we've got our three different idols across the bottom and we can see looking at this that the people who idolize Elon Musk seem to be a little bit sadder or not as happy as those who idolize Kylie Jenner and Dave Grohl. We don't know if any of these effects are statistically significant or not. Now, because our outcome is very ordinal, it's a one to four Likert scale, then we should treat it as ordinal data. So instead of doing an ANOVA on it, we are going to run a Kruskal Wallace test on it. Now, running a Kruskal Wallace test now is really straightforward. As I say, we can just use Truskal test as our command. And then we simply state, as we always do in R, our dependent variable, happiness, and our predictor is idle. So tilde means predicted by. So we can see we've got from our DF, our data frame that are called DF, we take the happiness variable, and then from the same data frame, we take the idle variable. When we run that. And this gives us a nice simple Kruskal Wallace test with a nice simple output. You can see our Kruskal Wallace chi squared statistic, our degrees of freedom, which is two, which is just the number of which is k minus one, number of conditions minus one, and our p value. So we've got a marginally statistically significant effect here. So we just write that up by giving our chi squared statistic with the degrees of freedom and the p value. If you want our effect size, we can use Kruskal F size command which is from the R statics package. And it's exactly the same thing as before. DF happiness, predicted by DF idle. But we do also to tell it what our data frame is called as well for this command. Can we run that? And here's the output here. The output it gives us is a eta squared and the effect size is 0.121. So, and it tells you here, it's a moderate effect size. It's a, small moderate effect size to be honest so we've got a main effect of idle and it's a small to moderate effect size now we may also want to do some post hoc testing of this because this critical wallace has simply told us there's an effect of idle on happiness so we need to compare the different idols to each other to do this we use pairwise wilcox test as command as our command and this will give us our 
pairwise comparisons between our groups. And we state here the dependent variable and a comma, and then the independent variable or factor. Here we say exact equals false. This needs to be stated if you have tied ranks. So the school Wallace test work through ranking the data. And more often than not, you will have tied ranks. I'll show you what happens if you don't have this in, in a moment. So we say exact equals false because we've got some tied ranks. And then we can say P adjust methods. So how are we going to do an adjustment to our P value? We can say none in this example here. So we can run this. And it gives us p values for the differences. So, as we can see, there's a significant difference between Dave Grohl fans and Elon Musk fans, p value of 0 0.027. Kylie Jenner and Elon Musk fans are not significantly different, p value of 0.333. And Kylie Jenner and Dave Grohl fans are not significantly different either, with our p value of 0 0.085. And by looking at our box plot, or indeed by running some descriptive statistics, we can tell that the Dave Grohl fans are significantly happier than the Elon Musk fans. If you wanted, we could run a correction on this. So for our P adjusted method, we could state Bonferroni. And then you can see nothing significant anymore. It's just because of the multiplication of the Bonferroni adjustments. There are some other adjustments that you can use as well, like home adjustments which we just changed that to HOLM, if you want to do a home adjustment and so on. If you can't remember what the adjustments are, what they're called, just type in nonsense into that. And here you go. It tells you the type of adjustments that you can ask for because the argument here is none of those. So it gives you a list of the things that you could say to get them. So that's a nice simple way of finding your adjustments. So just to show you, this is what happens if we don't say exact equals false so default exact equals true so if you run that cannot compute exact p value with ties cannot compute exact p value with ties cannot compute exact p value with ties so out of those three it can't produce you your exact p values so it gives you a little warning there it does still produce you your p values up here which just does it through exact equals false command that assumes that's what you want instead. So if you want to avoid that warning message, you just write exact equals false. And that's basically how you can do a cross-school Wallace test in R. It's nice and straightforward. Don't need many packages apart from your effect size. And it produces you a relatively straightforward output as well.